everyone, I'm Sarah of Bridge Textures Crochet and welcome. Today we're going to learn how to crochet these thermal fingerless gloves, which you can see here in front of you. I will just slide mine on so you can see how it fits and I'll pull back. So these are the thermal fingerless gloves. They're a very simple uh, design. Uh, you, of course, when you're working yours, you can add any color to them that you would like. They're fairly easy to work and they're worked in a thermal stitch and the thermal stitch is a great stitch to work if you're looking for warmth because it creates a dense fabric but it does have a little bit of give to it as well so there's also a little bit of stretch to it. So these are the thermal um, fingerless gloves for this pattern today. You're going to need about 300 yards of uh, a lightweight yarn the pattern does come in three different sizes, a small, uh, medium, and large uh, slash extra large for women. Uh, today in the video, I'm going to be working the uh, women's medium size. So we're going to work that today. In the pattern, you will see it uh, written out and I'll give you the measurements there. The written pattern is free and it's on my blog at richtexturescrochet.com. You're going to need about the full 300 uh, yards of the lightweight yard. You're also going to need a four millimeter crochet hook and direct links to all of these items can be found in uh, the description of this video. So thank you so much for joining me. While you're here, don't forget to subscribe. These gloves were designed to go along with the Twisted Thermal Ear Warmer, which is another pattern that you can find here on my YouTube channel and uh, at richtexturescrochet.com. Now our pattern today is worked from uh, the cuff of the glove, so down here, up. Uh, the cuff is worked in rows and then the body of the glove is worked in rounds. I should have mentioned at the beginning, but you are also going to need a stitch marker for when we come to the main part of the glove. So again, I'm going to be working the medium size today. Uh, head over to richtexturescrochet.com if you want to adjust the size and all the stitch counts are there. We're going to start by working a slip knot and then by working a foundation chain and for the medium size our foundation chain will need to be 25 chain stitches Ten, fifteen, twenty. and 25. Once you've worked your 25 chain stitches, you're going to begin. I like to work a slip stitch uh, cuff uh, for my gloves. If you would like to substitute these stitches, you may also use a single crochet or a half double crochet. So you're going to begin by working into the second chain from our hook and working a slip stitch into that first chain or a single crochet or half double crochet. And then we're going to work slip stitches all the way across. When you come to the end of this row, you can chain one and turn your work. Once you come to the end of your row, you're going to chain one and turn your work. We're now going to work into the back loop only, which when you look at the top of your stitch, you have this nice V shape and your back loop only is that horizontal bar that's furthest away from you. So working under that back loop only, you're going to slip stitch into that first stitch and then slip stitch into each stitch all the way across again. When you come to the end, you're going to uh, chain one and turn your work. At the end of row two, chain one and turn your work. And now for the remainder of your cuff, you're going to repeat that row two. So slip stitch into the back loop only of each stitch all the way across, chain one and turn your work. Now you are going to 
uh, work these slip stitches in the back loop only until your work from the beginning measures approximately seven inches for that medium size. So slip stitch in the back loop only until your work from the beginning measures about seven inches and that's not stretched. And then you can meet me back here. Okay, I've now worked my uh, glove cuff until it's about seven inches. It's going to have quite a bit of stretch to it. Uh, that's why I love working with these slip stitches. So once you've worked uh, your seven inches, you're going to fold it over in half so that your two short sides are meeting. We're going to simply slip stitch a seam all the way across, so chain one, working in the back loop only through both thicknesses, you're going to slip stitch in each stitch all the way across. So just simply pick up those back loops only. Hopefully they're not too tight of each stitch all the way across. It's going to create a nice seam and then you can turn it right side out. Uh, there's no need to fasten off at the end. You're going to keep your yarn joined. So go ahead, slip stitch all the way across. Once you have slip stitched your cuff together, you can turn it right side out like so. And we're now all set to begin working the body of our glove. So what we're going to do for this first round, we're going to chain one, and now we're going to uh, evenly work a total of 48 single crochet stitches all around the cuff. And actually I want the right side facing out here. So working around your cuff, you're going to work 48 single crochet stitches all the way around. Again, if you're looking for a size other than the medium size, uh, you'll want to get the correct stitch counts from uh, richtexturescrochet.com. So you're going to, again, 48 single crochet stitches. If it helps, place a stitch marker about halfway around the cuff and uh, work half on one side, 24 on one side, 24 on the other. Uh, and uh, it'll help you keep the stitches fairly even. I'm just going down a little bit into the cuff uh, of, of it just to give it a little bit more strength, but we're just working these single crochets all the way around. For round, uh, at the end of round one, you're going to join with a slip stitch into that first stitch and chain one. At this time, there's no need to turn your work. For round two, You've already chained one. We're going to work into the back loop only again. And we're going to single crochet into the back loop only of each stitch. So start with the same stitch that you joined in. And then single crochet into each stitch all the way around. This is going to set us up so that for the rest of the glove we'll be able to work our single crochet thermal stitches. So single crochet into the back loop only all the way around and uh, when you come to the end you're going to join uh, back to the beginning you're going to join with a slip stitch into that first stitch. Okay so I've come all the way around uh, on my round two working in the back loop only you're going to join with a slip stitch into this first stitch. Then the next thing I want you to do is take your stitch marker and you're going to mark that first stitch, inserting your hook through the front loop only of that stitch and the front loop only of the stitch down below. Okay, this is going to help us find it later on as we're working our thermal stitches. So I'll show that again. You're just going to insert your hook or your stitch marker through the front loop only of that same stitch that you joined in and then continue straight down into the front loop only 
of the stitch two row rounds below. You're then going to chain one and turn your work. And when I turn my work, when I'm working the thermal stitch, I don't turn it so that it's fully backward. Uh, you can uh, turn it so that the wrong side is facing uh, as it gets going, but I find for these first um, first rounds, it's just easier if you uh, kind of turn it so it's vertical. Then what we're going to do is you're going to chain one and we're going to work thermal stitches. We're going to work our thermal stitch in this first stitch. And to work your thermal stitch, you're going to insert your hook into the back loop only. So it is still facing me, but if I turn my work fully, it's the back loop only of the next stitch and then down inserting it into the back loop only of the stitch two rows below or two rounds below. Once you've done that you can then yarn over as per normal, uh, drop a loop, yarn over and pull through two loops like a single crochet. You're going to work these thermal stitches all the way around always remembering to insert it into the back loop only of the next stitch and into that back loop only of the stitch next stitch two rounds below yarn over draw up a loop yarn over and pull through two so this is our thermal stitch we are going to work um, up to rounds three through to 26 in this thermal stitch so keep going work your thermal stitches around I will continue working and I'll show you uh, what you're going to do when you come back to the first, how you're going to join and then move your stitch marker. And uh, yeah, we're going to work through to round 26 in the thermal stitch. Okay, so the, at the end of my round three here, uh, I've worked my thermal stitch. I have my thermal stitch that I've marked with my stitch marker. So I'm just going to insert my hook around that stitch marker because I don't want to lose these stitches. Then I can remove it and complete my thermal stitch. I find it just makes it easier. Then what you're going to do is go to your first stitch of the previous round, insert your stitch marker again through those two front loop only the front loop of the next of the first stitch and the one two rounds below you're then going to join with a slip stitch into that first stitch and I, I do this because otherwise that first stitch seems to get pulled quite tight and uh, can get lost in the pattern you're then going to chain one and turn your work now what we're going to do for the next 23 rounds, so as I mentioned before, through to round 26, it'll be 23 rounds, you're going to simply work thermal stitches in each stitch all the way around, join with a slip stitch in the first stitch, just as I showed you there, and uh, yeah, continue that through to round 26. Now, in case while you're working and it's easy to do, you lose track of which round you are on, you can easily count these rounds um, by simply counting. So if I look at the front here, I have my first round of single crochets here that I worked evenly around, and then I have round one and round two, but you have to also count the one that's showing through on the back which is number three uh, so um, and four so it's actually one two if I turn it over I have three and four so you want to um, just make sure that you're counting both sides just because of the way the stitch is worked uh, your rounds are worked side by side which is what makes it quite dense and uh, so you have eight, uh, two rounds uh, each time you count up so continue to work through, I hope that makes sense, <laughs> continue to work through to round 26 uh, in the thermal stitches and uh, then meet me back here. Once you have worked through to round 26, 
This is what your work from the beginning is going to look like. And we're now going to crochet around that will give us the hole for our thumb. So you've joined with a slip stitch in the first stitch, you've chained one, you're now going and turn your work, you're now going to work thermal stitches in each of the first 39 stitches. So work 39 thermal stitches. I'm just going to keep the camera running here as I work. There's five. Ten. Twenty, thirty. We have nine more stitches to go. And 39. Once you've worked your 39 stitches, you're then going to chain 5. Skip the next 9 stitches, so that's all the way to your stitch marker, and join with a slip stitch into the first stitch. You can then remove your stitch marker and we're going to mark our first stitch just as we did before, so inserting it through those front loops only. Once you've done that, you can chain one and turn your work. We're now going to work single crochet stitches into each chain stitch, working into that back loop only. So you're going to want to work five single crochet stitches, one in each chain stitch, working in the back loop only across your chain. That will then bring you to the body of your glove and you're going to continue working thermal stitches in each stitch all the way around back uh, to the beginning of that thumb hole so in the remaining stitches when you come back to your first stitch you can join with a slip stitch into that first stitch mark it and turn your work At the end of round 28, you're going to join with a slip stitch into that first stitch, chain one, turn your work. You're now going to work a total of six more rounds for this medium size of thermal stitch in each stitch all the way around. So work six more rounds of thermal stitch. We're working across the top of our thumb here, uh, moving our stitch marker up as we go. Uh, at this point, we're just working around the fingers portion of our glove, and we're gonna come back and work that thumb portion in a few moments. So this is for rounds 29 through to 34. Simply work a single crochet thermal stitch in each stitch all the way around, join with a slip stitch, chain one, turn your work, uh, move your stitch marker, and uh, 
yeah, continue on. Uh, then meet me back here and we'll work our thumb. We are almost through our thermal fingerless gloves. At the end of round 34, you're going to have a piece that looks like this. You've uh, joined with a slip stitch in that first stitch. You can then chain one and turn your work. We're now going to work one final round of single crochet stitches around the top of our glove. When we work this final round of single crochet stitches, we want to work under both loops of the next stitch and into that back loop only of the stitch two rows below. So you want to uh, two rounds below. You want to insert your hook under the three loops. So I'll show you one more time. Insert your hook under both loops of that top stitch and then also into that back loop only of this stitch two rounds below. Yarn over, drop your loop, and complete the single crochet stitch. This is going to even everything off. So again, into the next stitch, we're just single crocheting into those top two loops and the back loop only down below, single crochet. You're going to do that all the way around the top of your glove. I'll just work a few stitches here and then you can see what it looks like. And uh, make sure you're not skipping any stitches uh, in between. And then when you turn it around, this is what it's going to look like at the top. So it's all going to be even. So uh, yeah, work your single crochet stitches, working through those three loops all the way around. And uh, then in join with a slip stitch into that first stitch. You can then fasten off the top of your glove and weave in any ends before we move on to working our thumb. Once you have finished the top of your glove, this is what it's going to look like. You have your thumb hole right here, which we're now going to fill in, and that's the top of your glove. So to work the thumb hole, what we're going to do is we're going to, into the bottom corner, we're going to join with a slip stitch in the back loops only of uh, the last round and the round two rounds below. So join with a slip stitch into that first stitch. And you're going to work thermal stitches into each of these nine stitches. So these were the uh, nine, um, sorry, I joined on the wrong side. <laughs> I'm gonna go across and I'm going to join up here. There we go. So I'm joining it on my left side because I'm right handed. So just join with a slip stitch into that first stitch, inserting your hook through the back loops only of both of those rounds. There we go. And you're going to work nine thermal stitches. So a thermal stitch in each stitch all the way across. Again, we're working in our back loops only, uh, which and I'm also working over top of my thread there, which is what you're seeing me do, just so that I don't have to go back in and weave it in later. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. You're then going to simply work uh, uh, five single crochet stitches across the top. So you can work them into the back bumps or into the uh, horizontal bars that uh, are left there from your previous round if you would like. You just want to work five across there. There's two, three if you need to space them out a little bit. You can four and five. 
you'll have come all the way around and you're going to want to, as you did before, mark that first stitch and it might be kind of tiny to see because you are working in that thumb. Mark that first stitch and join with a slip stitch into the first stitch, chain one and turn. We're now going to work thermal stitches around because uh, our top five stitches were just regular single crochets. We're working in the back loop only of that first row and you're working a single crochet into each of the first five stitches. And then you will be back around to your nine thermal stitches into the next nine stitches. And it might be harder to see because it is a smaller opening there. So work your nine thermal stitches across, then join with a slip stitch and turn your work. At the end of round two, you've joined with a slip stitch, turn your work. Uh, you should be now set up to do four more rounds of thermal stitch in each stitch all the way around. Uh, so this will bring you up to round the end of round six. You're simply going to thermal stitch as you did before in each stitch all the way around. Join with a slip stitch in that first stitch, move your stitch marker and uh, turn your work. So work four more rounds of thermal stitch just around your thumb. And as you can see as I'm coming up on the top here I have uh, it nicely set up for my thermal stitches to continue. Okay, so once you've worked your six rounds, you're going to chain one, join chain one. Uh, we're now going to, as we did around the top, work one final round of single crochet stitches, inserting your hook under both loops of the previous round and that back loop only of the round two rounds below. And you're simply going to work a single crochet stitch in each stitch all the way around. Continue working. I'm almost back to the beginning. Once you come around to the beginning, you can join with a slip stitch into that first stitch. Fasten off. I have a little tail here that I can clip from earlier. Go ahead, weave in your ends and then your thermal fingerless glove is complete. So thank you so much for joining me and uh, while you're here, once again I invite you to subscribe if you happen to make these gloves. Feel free to share a photo with me across social media, Facebook, Instagram. I love to see your finished products. Thank you so much and uh, I look forward to seeing you again next time. Until then, happy crocheting. Bye. Mm -hmm.